With iPhones basically dominating the phone market, you might be wondering if a Mac would be the right computer for you. Everyone's always talking about the ecosystem and how well Apple products work together, but would Apple's best value Mac ever be right for you. In January 2023, Apple released the updated M2 Mac Mini as well as the much higher spec M2 Pro version. But if you're looking to pick one up, perhaps taking the leap from Windows to Mac for the first time, which is right for you? Should you upgrade it when you buy it? And what will you need to make it a fully ready setup, ready to go? Let's talk. I'm iCave Dave and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. First, a brief history of the Mac Mini. I've been using Apple's M1 Mac Mini since it was first released at the end of 2020 and it has been an absolute workhorse for me. Apple has just released the M2 version and it gets a lower starting price, faster chips and Apple's M series chips were already impressively fast. And we'll come back to that M1 version a little later. Why doesn't Apple offer a stripped down Mac that is more affordable? We think we know what they have in mind and we're introducing it. It's called the Mac Mini. Mac Mini as a product line first appeared on January 22nd, 2005, powered by an IBM G4 chip and with a slightly different design than today, a smaller footprint, taller and basically defined by the size of a CD or DVD for its drive. It was $499 and it was designed to be an easy way into the Mac ecosystem for people who currently had a PC and could reuse their current keyboard, mouse and display. That design carried through to Apple's Intel transition, got neglected between 2014 and 2018 without any updates in the current form factor, then changed colour and went up from $499 to a starting price of $799. When Apple introduced Apple Silicon in 2020, the Mini was right there in the original lineup, with M1 and a $100 price cut down to $699, and the performance blew away all of the Intel versions that had come before, even though for some reason Apple kept the Intel ones around at a higher price. Strange. Now though, M2 is here and the price is down another $100 to just $599. And when you consider that the original $499 in $2005 is the equivalent of $758.33 today, $599 is a massive deal. But who is the Mac Mini for? Now if you don't need the full portability of a laptop computer, M2 Mac Mini is probably the right Mac for you. It's certainly the lowest price where you can get into a brand new Mac. And honestly, there's almost no better options when it comes to value in the used Mac market either, which which is genuinely mind-blowing. Almost though, and we'll come back to that later. If you use your computer for the typical everyday stuff that everyone does, office applications, web, uh, content consumption, you are absolutely set with the base model. Photoshop, illustration, still no problems whatsoever. Even if you're making videos, it's absolutely enough. And I know this because I built this channel on an M1 Mac Mini and it never skipped a beat. Now when it comes to M2, it's even better. And I know that because I've been using that in the MacBook Air since it released in June 2022. So assuming you've had a desktop PC in the past, you can bring your keyboard and mouse, Bluetooth or wired. The Mac Mini is one of the very few Macs that still rocks USB-A ports for exactly this reason, along with basically any display or even a TV, which is what I use in my setup. Now, there are a couple of things that you should know about the Mac Mini and how you can work around them. First of all, the base M2 model, like the M1, is capable of running two external displays. Now, those displays can be very high resolution, running up to a 5K and a 6K panel simultaneously, but if you do need a third display, the M2 Pro version might well be a better choice for you. You will also double your CPU performance pretty much. You've got eight performance cores instead of four, and you've got four efficiency cores still there, just like in the M2. You may have also heard that the SSD storage in the newer Mac Mini M2 is actually slower than in the previous M1 model, and it is true in the smallest capacity models. In the M1 version, the 256 gigs of storage was split across a pair of 128 gig NAND flash chips, whereas in the M2 it's on a single chip, which does cause a slight bottleneck in terms of read-write speeds. That being said, if you only need the smallest of the storage options, the chances are you're probably not going to be using the system for massive video or other files in real world use because they won't fit on it. So the chances are you'll never actually notice the difference in terms of speed. It's a little annoying, but we're talking a couple of seconds here and there. But the system did also get a price cut of $100, so I feel like they can get away with this. Of course, if you do need a little more storage, moving up to the 512GB uh, model will resolve that issue, giving you the full read 
speed and write speeds, and of course, you know, more storage. Finally, even though this Mac Mini has more ports than almost all of the other Macs, with the base model offering a pair of Thunderbolt ports, two USB-A ports, an HDMI, an Ethernet, and a dedicated power port, and the M2 Pro version getting a pair of additional Thunderbolt ports for a total of four, some might still miss the SD card readers that come to the Mac Studio. Happily, there are some great hubs out there, like this one from Minisburu, and this adds those SD card and mini SD card slots, along with a pair of additional USB-C ports, and even an internal M.2 SSD slot so you can save a bunch by putting your own M.2 drive inside and probably get around a terabyte of fast storage for about the same cost as doubling up from 256 to 512 gigs from the factory at Apple. So that's well worth considering too. One thing you might not realise if this is the first time you're getting into a Mac is how much you can actually do with the software you get completely free as a Mac owner. You get Apple's Office Suite included for free, not a trial, just free. That's Pages numbers and keynote and they're much more user-friendly than Microsoft's versions and fully compatible as well as that you get iMovie which is a very capable video editing suite again completely for free and GarageBand a great music and audio production package which includes masses of loops to get started with for free and obviously you get your usual web browser video players all of that jazz too one thing that the mac mini doesn't have of course is a webcam because it doesn't have a display built in unlike almost all of the other macs and to get a decent one is normally quite a decent chunk of change but if at the start of the video you are one of those people that is looking at getting a mac because you're an iphone user and you love it good news. Continuity camera is a new feature in macOS Ventura, which means that you can use your iPhone as your Mac's webcam wirelessly. The camera on your iPhone is way better than basically any webcam out there, and if you don't believe me, this whole video has been shot direct onto my Mac using continuity camera on my iPhone. Mind blown. I know. And of course, if you're using your iPhone with a Mac, you have access to things like AirDrop to send videos, photos, and other files wirelessly really, really quickly. You can copy and paste from one device to another as well. So text snippets and everything perfectly syncs. So you can even use AirPlay from your phone to the Mac's display. And if you have an iPad 2, universal control means that you can set your iPad next to your Mac and move your mouse cursor right over to control it, drag and drop files between devices and more too. How cool is that? It's basically magic at this point. But what about used Macs? Now I said earlier that there's almost no computer with value like the M2 Mac Mini, but given the price reduction on the M2, there's a bunch of lightly used M1 Mac Minis now hitting the market, and many of them are around the $400 mark. That is an insane value. Especially if you're not going to do heavy duty video creation, the M2 added encode engines and decode video engines with ProRes hardware acceleration, which will make a noticeable difference if you're doing a lot of video but if you're simply looking for an easy desktop for day-to-day -day tasks maybe something to attach to your TV as a media center or uh, a secondary PC uh, a computer for a kids room the M1 Mac mini for a couple of hundred less is an amazing deal and you could maybe use that extra cash to get some external storage or even look out for a 16 gig of memory model just to give you a little bit more headroom in future but to be completely honest 8 gigs does work really well on these things that's what I use on even the M2 MacBook Air and making videos like this doesn't even stretch it. But for the love of God, don't even consider an Intel model. Since 2020, there have been exclusive features for Apple Silicon models in Mac OS, and support for Intel models will be limited going forwards. Plus, they're slower, run hotter, and make a bunch of noise because the fans will be whirring away. Just don't do it to yourself. Regardless of what purchase you have your eye on next, basics like a new MacBook, a HomePod, or something more opulent like food, we all know that prices are rising. That's why I've partnered with Mint Mobile for this video to help save you money thanks to that guy from those movies ryan reynolds because he owns it hey there it's ryan reynolds owner of mint mobile enticing right you can switch to Mint Mobile today and get premium wireless for as low as $15 a month without sacrificing your coverage, your speed, or your data because they're built on America's largest 5G network, keeping costs low by selling directly online without retail stores or salespeople. They just get me. 
Switching is super easy and with a digital eSIM and all of the iPhones since the XS have supported eSIMs, you can sign up and activate right now on your phone from the comfort of your home. No standing around and you can keep your current device and phone number. And if you need a physical SIM, Mint Mobile will ship you one free of charge. All Mint Mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text plus lightning fast 5G and free mobile hotspot. Mint Mobile will show you how much data you use each month and recommend the right plan to save you money or check out their modern family plan. Super affordable and starting at just two lines. Use my link mintmobile.com forward slash iCaveDave in the description and you'll get premium wireless starting at just $15 a month. Stop paying more than you need to on your wireless bill and start saving with my partner Ryan Ren. I'm uh, Mint Mobile. Thanks to Mint Mobile for supporting the show. Thanks so much for watching and let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about the Mac Mini. Use hashtag iCaveAnswers and I'll answer them in a future video. Thank you so much to our patrons and we will see you in the next one.